Hello and welcome to Vintage the Off. I'm very glad you joined me. I've got my hands on some vintage military gear I'd like to show you. I've already done a bit of a gear drop. This is the 58 pattern poncho or slicker maybe Americans might call it. Um, obviously this was introduced sometime around 1958. This, this went with their, their kit or webbing. Let me put it on to show you. So this is what it looks like. Pretty good coverage. Just let me take it off. This was used in the British and the Irish Army. Uh, certainly in the Irish Army up to perhaps 20 years ago, this would have been in use. It's a pretty simple item. Basically what it is, is a good, good quality poly tarp. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, with, a, with a hole and a, a hood stitch done. It's quite basic and I believe in the British Army, but I know for sure in the Irish Army, this was all that was issued in the way of rain gear. They didn't issue rain trousers which uh, seems crazy. So this also doubled as a shelter or a tent. You tie up the hood and you stretch it out. I don't claim to be an expert in much of anything. So we're going to try and set this up and see how we get on, okay? Let's go set up camp. Okay guys, we're going to set up camp here. Now I got this equipment from a good friend of mine who was in the Irish uh, military uh, for a good many years. And he told me how to use these and where they set up and they generally pick somewhere like this with some shelter from the trees and with plentiful trees to uh, to rig their ponchos from okay so i've put down a little bed of spruce boughs uh, just to get us off the damp and for a little insulation i'm going to put a sheet of black polythene over this And I'm using the polythene because I have two ponchos, one of which I'm going to use as a ground sheet and I don't want to get any sap or, or dirt on this. This doesn't belong to me, so I'm taking care of it. Okay, they're pretty tough and durable and pretty bomb proof, very simple but bomb proof. Okay on my ground sheet I'm just going to put a kit mat Now this is the other piece of kit. Uh, the bag is obviously a bit faded from the sun. But this is one of the, the very first bivy bags that came around. Uh, he told me this was used in the British Army as well. It's not Gore-Tex, it's not breathable. It's simply a waterproof bag. And I'm sure they were very happy to get these when they first came on scene. So I'm quite interested to try this and see what it's like. Okay. Now the weatherman says it may get to minus one tonight, minus one Celsius. 
Um, so I want to try out my own sleeping bag. This is just a reasonably priced bag, Cozy Tech 450. And I want to see, it's supposed to uh, be good for up to minus four. And I want to see how this fares out. So I'll put this into the baby bag. Now we'll set up our rain fly. And for this my friend recommended uh, bungees. He said it's the best way to do it. Obviously you need to tie up the hood with a piece of string. and we'll peg out the sides. I have a stack of good quality tent pegs, but do you think I could find any of them? So I've made, these are homemade ones, some from some heavy wire, I think it's bull wire they call it. So they should do fine. I'm gonna drop the feet a little lower. the head a little Guys, that's your basic setup, and this is exactly the place they would choose to camp. And he said the best setup and the only setup they used was to keep it low to the ground, as low as they could, as low as they could possibly get it. Um, as I say, it's not a huge tarp, it's not a huge uh, shelter at all. It's quite minimalistic, and it's just, uh, just about barely enough cover. And to finish off, they would put their backpack, or they usually had a bergen which would be bigger than this. They put their backpack to cover off the opening at whatever side they expected the, uh, the worst of the rain or wind to come from. So, we go something like that, okay? So that's camp set up, guys. Um, I've got a snack bag along and I've got some food for later. I'll leave it up there for safety, maybe. Um, today we're on Grey Squirrel Patrol, 
Um, the American grey squirrel is a, an invasive species here. I saw one down here maybe 11 years ago, but I've not seen one since. But I keep patrolling the area, I keep an eye out for them. And I'm doing this uh, to protect our native red squirrel. Uh, the greys have wiped them out basically in England. I don't want that to happen here. So we're going on grey squirrel patrol, okay? Let's go. Okay, my friends, uh, I'm in the natural wood now. This is the best squirrel habitat around, basically because we have uh, about a gazillion hazel trees and hazels, hazel trees grow hazelnuts. So this is where most of our hunting will take place. We're just going to move and move quietly, stop and look, and then we'll let Dyson use his nose. Dyson is a pretty young dog. He's less than two years old, and he doesn't really know what he's at yet. But it's all part of growing up. So that's the plan. It's highly unlikely we see a grey. I hope to God we don't see one. It's also highly unlikely we see a native red. They're very elusive. Even though they are protected and not hunted, uh, they're very, very elusive. They run and hide if the minute they spot anything. Sometimes you get one that'll stand, and if so, I, I'll give you a look. I won't bore you too much with the hunting. That's our plan, okay? See you later.
I'm back at the shelter. It's it's uh, 8 p.m. I haven't been hunting all this time. I had to go home and sort a few things out. I've rearranged the shelter a little bit. It was very, very low, so I've brought it up a bit. I think I was a bit over optimistic. So I've raised it up and we have some rain arriving, so I need to get in fairly quickly. I'll get back to you once I'm inside, okay? It was a bit of a wriggling contest, but we're in the poncho and we're tucked up and we're ready for sleep. It's raining away fairly steadily, not too heavy, but nice and steady. It's, it's plus two degrees at the moment, so we'll see how the night goes. Right, I'm going to shut off the camera and we'll see you later. Bye bye. All right, guys. It's 4.46. I've come wide awake and I'm starving. Uh, I'm going to head home. It rained most of the night. Let me just show you in here. We have uh, quite a good bit of condensation here, especially around where my head was. Not too bad farther down. Not too bad at night. It rained most of the night. We stayed dry. Um, there is a fair bit of condensation over here more so. What, what I'm very interested in is uh, I'm going to pull the um, I'm going to pull the poncho out of the way in a moment and what I'm very interested in finding out is how did the, the bivy bag fare out. Just give me a moment and I'll get the poncho out of the way and we'll look at that, okay? So this is the outside of the bag guys. I don't know if you can see but there is some moisture on it. Just as well we had it really. Just condensation I would say building up from the poncho. Give me a moment and I'll open it and we'll see what it's like inside. Okay so this is the inside of the bag guys. Now, I don't know how this is showing on camera. But there's quite a nice few droplets of moisture there. It's certainly not breathable and the moisture certainly does build up. Maybe it's maybe it's more obvious here. Quite a build up of moisture. Yeah, it's certainly not breathable. But it's been a long wet night and the poncho kept the rain off of us. Any moisture that's built up is condensation from myself. So that's the 58 pattern poncho. It's something I've been wanting to try out for a long, long time. I finally got my hands on one. <laughs> it's a bit small, it's a bit minimalistic. Uh, I certainly would like something bigger but it did the trick and it did the trick for a hell of a lot of guys keeping them out of the weather anyway I'm away home I'm going to get some breakfast uh, I hope you enjoyed it guys and thanks very very much for watching bye bye